In this video, I'm gonna share with you three reasons I think AMD is a pretty crazy deal right now. It offers a rare mix of safety and security, combined with strong ongoing growth, and a disproportionately cheap valuation. AMD is a large internationally operating semiconductor company that's been in an ongoing duopoly with competitor Intel in the CPU marketplace. It's also becoming more well known for its GPUs, APUs, SOCs, and semi-custom applications powering the PS5 and Xbox Series X, along with a rapidly growing foothold in enterprise applications like cloud and data centers too. If that was all a little bit overwhelming, stick with me through this video and feel free to stick around for the other videos in this little series I'm putting together. I'm trying something new here where this central video explains my main thesis in a more compact and easy to swallow presentation, but for those wanting to dig deeper into things like discounted cash flow valuation, the company's financials, or other aspects, I'm putting out supplementary videos which I'll mention throughout this video for your enjoyment as well. So let's jump right in with reason number one, AMD is a great freaking deal right now, great reports. Revenues were up 93% year over year, gross profits were up 94% year over year, operating income was up 274% year over year, net income was up 243% year over year, and earnings per share was up 221% year over year. Seeing numbers like this, you would assume this is like some small growing software company or something like that, but pulling off massive numbers like this, in an industry like this that's so complex and large and tightly operated, really is no small feat. CEO Dr. Lisa Su's long-term plans are starting to unfold before our eyes, and we're seeing what she's really made of since she took role as the CEO in 2014. Oh, dude, I also forgot to mention that their gross margins have been holding steady at 46%. So, you know, oftentimes when we think of big industries, competitive industries like this, we don't think of gross margins 46%, you think of like five or 10 or 20, something like that. While all these figures are staggering, you might jump to the conclusion that last year's first quarter was just particularly crappy and something weird like COVID or something like that was causing some weird market bubble or something weird at the same time. But there's reason to believe that this whole year going on to future years too, AMD will continue this growth. There's so much good news in the recent quarterly report that they released that it's hard to get it all into one compact video. But simply put, check out this slide. Starting on the left, we have undeniably the best product portfolio in the company's history, along with an expanding customer and partner eco ecosystem, massive acceleration in all of the major segments of their business, and on the right, best in class financial performance too. Going into a slightly deeper look at the product offerings, check out the slide here where we see some of the reasons they're growing so rapidly. I can geek out like pretty intensely on this stuff, but I'll save you the punishment. <laughs> check it out here, all kinds of PC offerings, which as I mentioned earlier, are growing rapidly in sales. I would imagine probably partially aided by the crypto explosion of the last year, as well as work from home. Next, we have some Mac products and consoles, including PS5 and Xbox, powered by Zen 2 and AMD RDNA 2. Then we have Cloud, and they, they mention here Google Stadia, which is basically a service where you can play really like graphically demanding games through any old weak sauce computer or device because our internet connections have gotten so fast that they can handle outsourcing like all of, all of the processing to these AMD cloud servers and then send it back over the internet. It also mentions on this slide, Microsoft Azure, which is a growing customer of AMD's, which is a really good sign. They do also mention high performance computing and IP or intellectual property, which is like patents and licenses, along with their Samsung partnership over there on the right too. Finally, under this section of great reports, I wanted to mention that they are clearly taking market share primarily from their main competitor, Intel. But not only that, it seems like there might be some progress made on the GPU battlefront with the likes of Nvidia too. For a more in-depth look at how they stack up against the competition, not only their products, but also as investment opportunities too, please click on this video up here. Second reason to be pumped about AMD as an investment at the moment is that they already have strong growth prospects on tap for the rest of the year and into 2022 as well. So they have really good prospects. Continuing on from the last point I was mentioning about grabbing market share from Intel, particularly in the data center segment, in the most recent conference call, Dr. Lisa Su, the CEO, mentioned numerous times that they already have strong demand from a growing number of clients in the data center segment, powered by their Epic offerings. 
One of the tricky things about data centers is that unlike you and me going out to the store to buy a computer, companies have to finance and invest these massive, massive installations. And they also have to juggle like the IT department managing them, transitioning regularly enough to stay relevant and capable without breaking the bank. And a data center isn't something FedEx just drops off at your front door or something like that either. It takes like a lot of coordination and planning between the client and AMD especially when there are more customized or semi-customized requirements involved. So the buying process often ends up taking months or quarters, and the relationship often ends up being very long-term and sticky, which is why the data center segment is so important. In the last quarter, while we saw competitor Intel's enterprise data center customer revenues fall about 47%, AMD's data center revenues more than double, dude. Intel's really been struggling for a while now, and AMD's like totally capitalizing on that gap in the marketplace. On top of those great prospects, AMD's been working on an acquisition too, which will allow them access to numerous new market segments, potentially boosting their total addressable market, or TAM, by a solid 30% or so. Recently, AMD's acquisition of Xilinx has been approved by both companies' shareholders, so we're moving towards the final steps. The deal will potentially further strengthen their data center offerings as well with Xilinx's Field Programmable Gate Arrays, or FPGAs. You may be familiar with like adding a GPU to your home computer to boost the performance capabilities, or if new games come out and your computer can't handle it anymore, you might have to upgrade the GPU. In a similar way, Xilinx's FPGAs are similar, except they can be added to data center servers to improve the speed of AI applications or other workloads. So if you're finding that your fresh new data center isn't, isn't handling things as you hope they would, rather than canning the whole thing, you can boost the power with FPGAs. Or, you know, as data load increases over the years, you can upgrade little by little or incrementally. To learn more about the Xilinx acquisition, how it could help AMD step to the next level of their market growth, as well as the financial implications and some of the risk factors too, please check out this video I have linked up here and down in the description. And the third reason to be pumped about AMD is their rock solid financials. And the fact that they're not only just like a little bit undervalued, but they're like freaking pretty undervalued, dude. Before I get into this section, I did wanna mention that AMD's recently been bouncing off the $73, $74 support line. Though in recent days, it seems to you know have decided which direction it's going to be going. Uh, I think the $4 billion stock buyback they announced on the 20th probably helped that out a good deal. Check out the chart structure here on this one year chart. The green horizontal line is the current price. But the white line right below that is that $73, $74 support line we've seen AMD kind of hitting a few times in the last year or so. If you look back at late July of last year when the stock exploded, that huge jump, the reverse of that is kind of what could potentially happen if we burst below the $73 line. But it seems we're getting some support currently, so I don't know if that's something we have to worry about too much. So I think we'll be able to fight gravity going forward. Taking a closer look at the financials, let's start first with the balance sheet. By the way, if you're ever looking for a super fast and easy way to get around the financial statements, key ratios, charts, news, etc., all in one super convenient place, check out Benzinga. I've been using it for a while. I'll link it down in the description. And if you sign up and end up using it, um, that'll support us here at the channel too. While we're seeing all kinds of growth, we're also seeing cash and cash equivalents growing in the right direction. While thankfully Goodwill isn't growing into something fraudulent like a lot of other companies like to screw around with. On the liability side, there's nothing of particular concern, but the major takeaway here is the ratio of assets to liabilities. Look at how much faster the pile of assets is growing compared to the liabilities here which have barely grown in the last few quarters. A quick glance at the income statement shows similarly like impressive results. Uh, gross profits growing every quarter while keeping R&D and SG&A on a tight leash. This leads to a growing operating income each quarter as well. They did take advantage of a massive $1.3 billion tax benefit upon the release of a portion of the valuation allowance on deferred tax assets in 2020, which shows down there on the tax provisions portion, making it look like net incomes are down massively from the last quarter. But if you look past that, we're still growing in the right direction every quarter. So with their current market cap at about 95 billion-ish, uh, the P ratio works out to be about 31 or 32, which, you know, ends up sounding like pretty cheap, oddly cheap 
compared to a lot of the other crap we're, we have to deal with in today's market. Um, but assuming the Xilinx acquisition goes through, we'll see the market cap jump to probably 130 billion or so. And we'll also see profits jump similarly. Finally, in the research I've been doing over the past week, it seems there's a large consensus that AMD should be valued at something like at least 90 bucks if not somewhere up to like 140 to 160. I've done a DCF analysis and shared, you know, more about the financials over on this video here. So if you wanna check that out, please feel free. So we have great results, great outlook, and a great valuation considering all these different things. So I'm really interested to hear what your thoughts are about AMD. So as I mentioned earlier, all those different supplementary videos, if you want, please feel free to check those out. We would also like super love it if you could check out our Patreon link down below. Thank you guys so much for your time. I love you guys. And don't forget to stay generous.